normally I would not talk about my private life on the internet this candidly um, because I find it's generally just a good rule of thumb to keep to keep things to yourself when there's a ton of psychos on the internet. I know most of you are good people, but I've absolutely had stalkers fly to Canada to try and find me. I have literally had people call dental offices to try and get my dental records for whatever reason. It's bizarre. And when you have a family, it's best to just try to keep the political commentary, political commentary and the private life, private life. But today it is getting impossible to do that because every aspect of our private lives is becoming politicized. You want to eat a box of cereal? Well, there's a damn political message on the side of it. Watch a TV show? Probably got some underlying political themes. Leave your house? Well, the government are going to tell you what time you can and can't do that and whether you have to put something on your face or not. Everything is being impacted by politics right now and it is being becoming impossible to separate the two, which I, I think is getting very tiresome for people. We can't be activists 24-7, and we can't be government slaves 24-7. Some of us just want to grill. We just want to barbecue, all right? <laughs> but on a, on a serious note, like many people, I have not been able to see my family for almost a year now. And I've missed huge life events. I've missed deaths of family members. And I, I had a really important family member of mine that... I was in palliative care, so I put in an application with the government for a special request to leave and go to Canada to visit them. I was luckily granted that request, but unfortunately, my flight to go was cancelled. I call the airline and I'm like, what's going on? Why has my flight been cancelled? Um, the government have put in a new rule where only a certain amount of people can be in airports. Okay, whatever, just the next hoop to jump through, right? Fine, put me on whatever flight after that is next available that meets that requirement. So they do, and then a few weeks later, I get a call, that flight is canceled too. Why was that flight canceled? Well, new rule, only a certain amount of airplanes are allowed in and out of the country from this country that I had my layover in. All right, I'll jump through that hoop too. Next one, just rebook me whenever I'm able. Cool, that one gets canceled too. And it's just like... I am doing everything right here. I have put in the form, I've booked my flight, I'll do the damn quarantine, I don't care, I'll wear the mask, I'll socially distance, I'll take the test, I'll do whatever you want, I just wanna see my family. Unfortunately, my family member has passed away now, just a couple days ago, so at least hopefully I can get to the postponed funeral. But I don't know if I'm gonna get there. I don't know what the next hoop is gonna be. I don't know what's gonna be canceled or the new rule. If I have to pat my head, rub my belly, turn around and jump up and down 20 times, I don't know what the next rule is gonna be. But it keeps changing. And that is what is making all of this impossible. And I think what is affecting not only my mental health, but everyone's mental health around me is this complete and utter uncertainty. And all of our lives are just at the whims of these nameless, faceless politicians. I feel like I am in an abusive relationship with the government. If you just do this one thing, if you just quarantine for two weeks, if you just socially distance, if you just wear the mask, if you just shut down the whole city for a month, then you'll see your family. Then you can open your business. Then you can go out and socialize again and go to school. And do, but it, it's never enough, is it? It never ends. It, the carrot is there just to get you to jump through the hoops, but you're never actually going to get it. At least that's what it's feeling like right now. And on top of that, I also feel like I'm being gaslit into thinking this is for the greater good. Like, Lauren, you have to do this because if you don't follow all of these random arbitrary rules that keep changing and keep being put in, then people are going to die. If you don't do this, then, you know, you're a horrible person. But it's like a narcissistic abuser who says this is a really important thing to not do, and then they do it every day. You see politicians on airplanes all the time. Well, no, our, our reasons are more important. The dinner I have to go to is more important. Uh, t if you're a tennis player, you can go to your game. Football player, you can go to your game because that's super important. If you're rich and famous, well, you can afford to get your own private jet to go wherever the hell you need to be. It's gotten to a point where I'm like, I'm doing my best to play the game, I'm doing my best to do everything right, but you are giving me no option here to win this stupid game. 
there's something in the Soviet Union called uh, behavioral bilingualism, where everyone would kind of learn to say the right things, do the right things, tout the party line, because if they didn't, obviously, their family would be at risk, their job would be at risk, their life would be at risk. So they learned this type of behavioral bilingualism where they would go out and they would say a certain thing and then they'd go home and internally they didn't believe it, they didn't buy into it, they didn't want to do it, but they were able to separate the two. So in their day-to-day -day life, they they could just survive and go home and be like, well, this is really messing up my mental health, having to lie every day, but it's just what I got to do. And I feel like we're getting to that point here. I see people doing the most ridiculous stuff every single day, and I just keep my mouth shut because I know that's for the best. I was at a restaurant slash bar, and they had, obviously, they had face mask rules in, but when you have a drink in your hand, you don't have to wear the face mask, right? So everyone's just sitting around with drinks, spitting, laughing, cheering, all beside each other. But if you walk two feet away and you don't have a drink in your hand, put the mask back on, otherwise you're gonna spread COVID, right? Then they had a dance floor there. And once again, no masks, tons of people all around each other, talking and chatting and laughing. But two feet away, this dance floor where a guy's playing his guitar, it has a big sign that says, no dancing because of COVID-19. This is like footloose, but with a pandemic apparently. <laughs> and my child loves dancing. He loves it so much. When he saw that dance floor, he just kept running to it and wanting to shake his arms while the guy was playing his guitar. And I kept having to run over and grab my son and be like, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. And I'm saying these words knowing they are completely ridiculous, completely absurd. Why can't he dance? He's clearly not giving COVID to anyone. He's clearly like no one else has masks around here. He's by himself. It just, but I had to say it. Otherwise, you know, the police are going to show up. They're going to take me out. I'm going to get kicked out. I'm not going to have a nice dinner with my family. I'm going to get in heaps of trouble, probably get canceled in the media. Not that I, I'm not already, but you know what I mean. And this day-to-day -day behavioral bilingualism that I am having to go through, and I know so many other people are having to go through, is legitimately chipping away at my mental health. Like, I can only play this game so much. I Even, even just aside from all of the restrictions, politically, the conversation is just deteriorated to a degree of incomprehensibility. I, I got into an argument on Twitter the other day with a guy who was saying I was lying that I wasn't banned from Australia. I was pointing out that I'm in Australia right now, actually. I'm, I'm not banned from the country. And he was like, no, you're lying. Here's a mainstream media article. You click on the article. Sure enough, it says I am, in fact, banned from the country. In fact, if you open my Wikipedia page, it says I'm banned from the country. What What am I supposed to do there? Like, he's he debunked me. He gave me his sources. He, the, the information he provided claims I am not in the country I am currently in. Like... <laughs> crazy to his credit he did apologize after but is it even his fault to call me out as lying when the official sources of our society apparently say that i am how are we supposed to communicate when we are being given so much false information i mean you look at the facebook stuff where if anyone so much was mentioned that they thought the virus might have escaped from a lab in Wuhan, they were losing their accounts, getting banned from the site. And now it turns out, oh, they might have been on to something. Is there any massive apology? Are people getting their accounts reinstated? Nope. Just a quiet undoing of that policy. There'll be no apology. There'll be no, you guys were right. It'll just be a slow shift of, actually, we knew all along. Don't know what you're talking about. A slow rewriting of history. And I don't know how we are supposed to function when we are constantly asked to partake in this behavioral bilingualism. We are constantly asked to jump through hoops for a carrot that we're never going to get. If you tell the truth, you'll potentially be banned from platforms. And even if you're found to be right, there'll be no vindication. It's definitely chipping away at my sanity a bit. And I'm someone who's never struggled with mental health issues. I've never been in a state where I'm like super depressed, crying all the time. 
can't deal with the world but it's this is affecting me so i cannot imagine what people who are actually struggling with mental health issues who don't have family to support them i cannot imagine what you are going through right now and i'm so sorry um all i can say is if you are having trouble functioning in the world as it is that probably means you're sane you are not insane <laughs> if if you are noticing things that make absolutely no sense that are entirely hypocritical that um have no consistency and it's bothering you you are probably doing all right up there if it's not bothering you that that's an entirely different question but uh here's my son to come and give me a hug and make it all okay again so <laughs> i'm gonna go hang out with him and hopefully balance my sanity i'll chat to you guys next time